Hey y'all, what's up? Jamie, that's me here. Welcome back, Candy. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this Potomac mess, Tiny. Okay, so of course, Robin and Candace. So Robin felt like Candace was being very critical when it came to her job, all right? Um, Candace pretty much gives us a timeline explaining how things broke down between she and Robin. She said after the reunion, Robin made a post. Um, Candace responded, said long hair. Robin says, yeah, but I bet you it makes me look like a white adjacent woman, which I'm sure isn't a good thing, right? So then um, Robin says that it hits her, it hit her hard, you know, when it came down to the colorism comments. But I don't think Candace called her a colorist. I don't think Candace said that to her. I think it was more so the fans. But I feel like the fans have been having this conversation for a long time before Candace and Wendy even spoke on it. But anyway, so Candace asked her at the time, like, are you, were you, are you mad at me? Robin ignored her. So at that point, I guess she believed they had an issue, right? So then Candace said when everything happened between she and Juan, you know, Candace ended up hitting her up and she still ignored her. So Candace is like, okay, this B-I-T-C-H got an issue with me and she not even addressing it. Okay, we want to play like that? F you then. So Candace pretty much went on her interviews and she drug the shit out of Robin. Like, you want to be childish? I'm going to be childish with you, okay? And I'm going to show my ass, all right? Um, and Candace does go on to apologize to her about that because she believes that she was wrong in the matter, right? Robin then goes on to talk about how she felt so uncomfortable. That's the most uncomfortable she's ever felt because she didn't know how to navigate dealing with that or being labeled a colorist or anything like that. Then she also goes on to talk about the fact that, yeah, when everything happened with me and Juan, of course, everybody talked about it, but I ain't had nobody sit up there and accuse me of plotting against their partner and all this and that. And it's like, Robin, you over there mad at Candace because she accused you of plotting. Let's be honest. The real reason she's really irritated with Candace, she was really mad with her, had everything to do with the colorism comment because Robin did not know how to handle that. OK, um, so that's where that came from. It ain't have shit to do with her plotting and this and that, which she probably did with Giselle none of that okay um candace did let them know like number one i apologize it wasn't my intent to really hurt your feelings or anything but listen you know i came up in a household where it, we can freely talk about race shame on me for assuming that both of y'all could do that you know what i'm saying i thought it was the same for y'all especially you giselle being that you know your dad came up during the civil rights movement so giselle for me says the most ignorant shit she says that she can have conversation uh colorism conversations because she went she went to an hbcu and a she went to an hbcu and she also pledged a black organization are you okay, B-I-T-C-H? Do you know how many white folks have gone to HBCUs and gotten a degree and have also pledged black Greek letter organizations? That does not mean that they have the range to speak on race. You sound just like a person that would say, oh my God, I can't believe that you think that I'm racist. I also have uh, black friends too. That's what you sound like. And you just sound stupid. I feel like it's a lot of us that go to HBCUs and can't speak on colorism. It's a lot of us. And pledge Greek letter organizations and can't have proper conversations. Like, it's a lot of people like that. Um, And that's why I felt like this should have been a conversation or a moment when they were being labeled this as this should have been a moment for self-reflection and to see why the audience and maybe even Candace would think the way that they think. Versus making it about you being accused of something. And I was so glad that Wendy at some point chimed in and pretty much said exactly that. And I love the way she collected Karen. Because as much as I have grown to like Karen, Karen does like to act like she knows it all. And that she truly is the grand dame and what she says goes. And I was so glad that Mia could check her because although y'all may have the range to have some conversations, it's just some SHI y'all cannot touch. And Wendy's going to eat y'all up every time when it comes down to it. Okay. Now, when they're having this conversation, Candace and Robin, Candace and Giselle, of course, Mia wants to chime in. And she, I felt like she was trying to come to Giselle's defense by asking, well, did you ever say that they're not colorists? And it's like, 
this is the very reason why I'm glad that Candace never ever mentioned to me a, a, about Gordon. Never mentioned to me that Gordon sent them text messages and was talking about her like a dog. Because like I said before, girl, you really ain't nobody friend for real, for real. All right. Shout out to Wendy for clocking it and saying, uh, yeah, she did say that they weren't uh, at the last reunion. Hello. So I'm so glad that she remembered that and brought that up. Right. So um, I also think that, you know, when it comes to the conversation of colorism and stuff like that, um, I think that Giselle does know her proximity to white uh, to whiteness. But I also in addition to that, more importantly, I feel like she also knows her favoritism and her role within this show. That is why she does the SHI that she does because she knows that she can get away with it. I feel like when Candace was highlighting colorism and things, I feel like that was more so towards the producers. I feel like it was more so for the producers as it pertains to Giselle's behavior versus anybody else's. Now, granted, it is some of the ladies on the show because how y'all may respond to Wendy and Candace about stuff y'all wouldn't respond to each other about certain shit too. Okay. That's number one. But I also feel like production definitely has a hand in it based on how we witness the way that they have missing footage. Oh, we don't have that footage. The way they're not playing certain footage of Giselle uh, going from, uh, oh, he forced me or whatever to he made or whatever, or he asked me or whatever it is that she said. I don't think they wrote that beautiful bean footage to them saying, oh, we don't have that footage of Wendy and them saying congratulations to Giselle, all this and that, to them going on Peacock and editing out what Giselle said to Candace saying, yeah, she cries about anything that has nothing to do with her. Or whatever it was, when we first heard it on Sunday night, they have taken that out. Okay, so y'all are over there protecting her. But y'all made sure that y'all showed the stuff that Wendy them. Y'all made sure y'all showed their facials, but you couldn't show them saying congratulations. So I feel like the colorism conversation isn't just for the cast. It's definitely for uh, production. Now, Robin does confirm that she was mad at Candace over her on over her uncomfortableness with colorism not over comments about um one that's what really got her hurt is that candace got her in that corner and a lot of people are calling her colorist or whatever and she doesn't know how to handle that conversation and that's what's bothering her more than anything okay it ain't got nothing to do with conversations about one ain't got nothing to do with her plotting on Chris and none of that. It's the fact that she doesn't know how to navigate colorism conversations. And I hate to say it, but the fact that you are uncomfortable with that, I feel like that ain't got shit to do with Candace because you're uncomfortable. That's like a person feeling like at work, a person is, is racist based on how they treat other folks or whatever the case is. It's racism up in this bitch. And you feel a way that somebody is calling you a race. Like, girl, that ain't got nothing to do with me. You need to go into the mirror and self-reflect and identify why people would label you as such. That ain't got shit to do with me. But anywho, so then Wendy says that instead of, and I love when she said this because it was on point with where I was thinking. She was like, instead of being uh, focusing on y'all being called a colorist, think about why you being called that and let's start there. And it seemed like NECA was trying to start there immediately. OK, and, and why are y'all being labeled that? What's going on? Basically, Ineka was pretty much agreeing with Wendy, I feel, by saying she do got a point. So let's start there. What, what's going on over here? Right. Karen, who always likes to overspeak and put her foot in her mouth at times, talk about some. Um, and there is no other show or group of ladies on the Bravo network to better have this conversation than us. Shame on you for saying that. OK. Shame on you for you to think that. And I love that Wendy said, girl, that is absolutely not true. She shut her ass all the way down. All the way that girl Karen didn't know how to act. Now, I feel like Karen was slick, try to gun for Wendy next season because she made her look a fool on that damn couch. But now that she didn't got in this damn accident with this alcoholic haul, girl, she going to be rethinking that. She going to get a friend. Anywho. Candace says um, that when it comes to the friendship between her and Robin, she don't give a damn no more. You should have been stopped caring a long time ago. She says that, look, worse has been done on this show and worse has been done to her. All right. So if this is what you feel like the end all be all is, then girl, so be it. At this point, Candace is not giving a damn, y'all, because Candace is going to be out. Like she told Giselle. Giselle said, get out of here. She said, oh, I'm out. 
I am. I'm out. So at this point, Candace don't even care no more. And I just wonder if she was trying to maintain her composure throughout this entire reunion because one, she could have possibly been talked to or two, she could possibly be pregnant and don't want to stress herself or get herself too upset. Um, also, she could be pregnant, which is why she's doing all this extra crying at the reunion. So it could be, you know, anything. I don't know. But one thing's for sure, two things for certain. She knew she was going to get the fuck up out of there. So at that point, she didn't give it a damn, okay? Um, what else? Chris ends up coming out. And as soon as he comes out, Robin got all these questions in the world questioning this man about screenshots and stuff. Chris said he ain't never met this lady. And, and Robin's like, yeah, of course you never met her. But have you had any conversations with her? Did you ask Juan that? Because you were so easy to believe everything he said immediately. So, uh, yeah, you got a whole lot of questions about some screenshots that could have been fake versus those receipts that were actually real. I can't. Okay. Chris basically told Robin he don't give a fuck. He could care less. He said what he said. He don't know that hoe. And what are you going to do about it, girl? We can move on. All right. She, uh, Giselle speaks on not having anything to do with it because um, I believe Candace believed that she did have something to do with it. And Giselle was like, the young lady even said I had nothing to do with it. The young lady came out and said, leave me out of it. Well, guess what? That same young lady also came out and said that she lied on Chris. So you want us to believe what she said about you not having anything to do with it, but want us to still believe that she may have been messing around with Chris? Make it add up because you sound stupid. So stupid. And we're supposed to believe that you didn't have nothing. Because based on your logic, if we believe that she messed around with Chris, then we got to believe that you also put her up to it. So which one is it? Which a fake at? It's like, mm -mm. And I saw how she tried to bring that back. She said, I had nothing to do with it. I, she said, leave Giselle out of it. I've never met this woman. All she said was that she had an affair with Chris. Whatever. She tried to bring it back around and make sure she put emphasis back on the fact that this lady said she messed with Chris. We own you right now, B-I-T-C-H. We're talking about you and your hand and your role that you may have played in the matter. Okay? Silly heifer. Anyway. Uh, what else happened? Pretty much, um, Chris said something like, you want to, she said something about, um, no, no, when Candace felt like Giselle had something to do with it, Giselle said she didn't have anything to do with it. And then, um, Chris said, well, that's how she felt. And then, uh, Giselle said, no, it ain't got nothing to do with how she felt. That's what she said. That's what it is. Interesting that you would say that. I love how Chris clapped back on her and was just like, but did you feel a certain way a few years ago? And you wanted to be entitled to how you felt a few years ago? then guess what? She should also be entitled to how she feel in this moment if she felt like you had something to do with it. Baby, Chris was ready for y'all and Chris was handling that. I don't know what Andy ended up asking him, but basically I believe he said something to the point where y'all want to always talk about pretty much, I think, don't quote me, I think he said something about pretty much how Candace handles stuff, but then y'all pretty much let this woman slide on similar SHI. So if y'all cool with it, I'm cool with it. And we can move the fuck on to a whole nother conversation. Let me tell y'all, I know Candace didn't go off the way that I wanted her to go off, but Chris came there without a care in the world and did not give a dog fuck because he knew that this was going to be his last time sitting on this stage for a minute. He knew he and Candace was going to be the fuck up out of here. So honestly, I ain't got to come here and answer a goddamn thing about nothing y'all talking about. So I was here for Chris Energy, baby. He didn't give not one fuck, and I loved it. I felt like he was over there on um Dr. Jackie time. Andy, I dealt with it. I'm done. Like, I said what I said. I'm done. That's the type of time he was on. Um, The guys were questioned about Juan and his absence, and nobody really wanted to speak on it. So Andy rephrased the question and was just like, okay, so tell me this. Riddle me this why do y'all feel like um like how do y'all like what makes y'all show up and support y'all wives and chris was like because i just want to be here you know and then of course um gordon was like well i just want to be here to support my wife well now ex-wife or whatever right so when gordon said the ex-wife i believe that that is what he's about to confess because somebody said, no, you guys are still married. No, Gordon is about to let us know that he and Mia either just recently signed on the dotted line or they've been divorced for some time now. 
that's what I feel like Gordon is about to come to us and let us know. Cause he said, y'all people have speculated certain things or whatever. Um, and I think he said some of y'all might be right. Some of y'all thought this or whatever the case is, but he's at a place where he just want to clear it up. And I think that's exactly what it is that Gordon is about to let us know that they are already divorced. And I also feel like Mia probably going to reveal to us that her ass is already married. You know, because didn't Mia come to now? If Gordon tells us that he and Mia are already divorced, I'm gonna cuss Mia out because I could have sworn Mia said, I, I think it was on this reunion, that she had to wait to divorce him because it wouldn't be good for her to divorce him while he's while or or finalize the divorce while he already has these uh issues with the business currently, whatever's going on with the business or whatnot. Um, I think her attorneys told her to hold off on the divorce. So if Gordon comes out there and he acknowledge and he says that they already divorced, baby, whoo, child, we got a problem. Unless Gordon finna come out and tell us that Mia has always been the breadwinner, she has been taking care of him, child. I don't know, but either way, they both on the same time, and that's just what it is. All right. That's all that I got. You guys let me know your thoughts about um what we just discussed when it comes to these ladies over there on Pathetic. I am Jamie That's Me, honey. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jamie That's Me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. King of my city and code sack. Come and I swing like soldier rag. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mile. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Finna the block for the gouda. We hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef for computers. I'm straight out the sewer. We come and you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed. So keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully oppressed. I was ready for years and they died of me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my mind, I came back with some battery. Stand for my honor. But you run no counter. Packing the stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad